A te nā koutou katoa ku hui mai nei, i te nei wā. He mihi tino mahana, warm greetings uh, to you all gathered here today. I declare this congregation to be in session. Please remain standing as we begin our proceedings with the University Waiata. Please be seated. Altena kato katoa. A namahi ki a rato ki a naro ite tiro hanga kano he haire koto haire oti atu ki a tato te kano i ora e hui hui nei i raro i te maru o ruhine tararu a mauna. Tēnā koutou rangatīnā, rangatāne ki mano atu, ka nui te mihi ki a koutou. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, ki ora anō tātou katoa. Vice-Chancellor, Massey University Council members, members of the university community, members of the Manawatū Campus Graduation Committee, distinguished guests, graduates and whānau. I extend a very warm welcome to you all to the spring graduation for 2020, the final of five ceremonies, sure to be the best as well. My name is Michael Ahi. I am Chancellor of the Massey University Council, which means I chair the group responsible for overseeing the university's governance, as well as having the great privilege in presiding over graduation ceremonies. For nearly 100 years, Massey has been part of the fabric of New Zealand's economy and culture. And for our graduates, it continues to be a launch pad to the wider world. We not only help students shape their own future, we help to shape the future of Aotearoa New Zealand and the world. At Massey, we strive to solve real-world problems that stand to make a difference in people's lives. Through the combined efforts of our research and our teaching, new solutions and discoveries are made to address the challenges that face us all. Graduates of Massey University complete their chosen course of study with more than mere knowledge. They leave with the capability and confidence to change the world around them, to establish new pathways, to lead the way forward and make life better for those around them. We are immensely proud of you, graduates, and the entrepreneurial spirit that you possess. This week, we are bestowing a total of 112 qualifications on 895 students over five ceremonies. A total of 1,091 students are graduating at these ceremonies or in absentia. And at this ceremony, we will, uh, we, degrees will be conferred and diplomas awarded in the Massey Business School. Graduations are 
festive occasions and one of the biggest celebrations of academic success. And while today is about you, the graduands, it's also about your friends and your whānau who encouraged and supported you in good times and in the not so good, and who are here to acknowledge your success. So to those of you preparing to accept your parchment, I encourage you, as you await your moment on the stage, to take a moment to reflect on the events that have led you to this point, the sacrifices, the hardships, the triumphs, the successes, the friends made along the way, the people that helped you through, and the experiences that became your student journey at Massey. And to those of you in the audience, when your loved ones take the stage today, don't hold back, please. Be exuberant, be loud. Their few seconds on stage will mean all the more for you being here. So please, don't be afraid to contribute to their experience. It would be remiss of me not to acknowledge that 2020 has been a year like no other, and certainly in living memory. The impact of COVID-19 on the university and to each of us this year has been immense. Yet, through adversity comes resilience. Through hard times comes strength. The graduates here today, many of whom completed studies under unique conditions, let's call it that, are to be congratulated. Your perseverance, your resilience in completing your qualifications show that you are well prepared for life after study and have the skills to face with confidence the road ahead. So turning attentions back to today and the celebrations at hand, I am so very pleased that the nation's alert levels are such that we have been able to hold this prestigious event at all, probably unique in the world uh, at, at the present time. And so my thanks go to the academic staff and council members seated behind me and the many professional staff who have put in the hard work, time and effort into the occasion. It is indeed a special event today. Graduates, by the end of today, you will be part of a Massey alumni family with more than 150,000 people around the world. And as Chancellor, I welcome you to this whānau and hope that through the many connections it offers, your careers will be supported and your lives enhanced. And I say this because the university cares about you. You're each part of the Massey University legacy part of a story now written and part of the chapters yet to come. The voice of you, our tauira, our students, is a key part of the narrative of our university and it's important that we will and continue to listen to you and chart our future direction together. Graduates, before you cross the stage, congratulations once more. Continue to work hard. Take all the opportunity that life gives you. I urge you, stay connected with us through your alma mater, with your alma mater and your university family through our alumni association. I know that you will continue to aim high and succeed in whatever you choose to accomplish in your life. Make us proud. Noreira te nā koutou, a te nā koutou, te nā koutou katoa. Thank you. By the authority of the Council of Massey University, I, Michael Ahi, Chancellor, will now award the certificates and diplomas and confer the degrees on those to be presented and on those in absentia. The Head of School of Economics and Finance, Professor Martin Berker, will call the names of graduates and recipients of certificates and diplomas in the Massey Business School. Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Stephen Kelly, Massey Business School will hand out the scrolls. Chancellor. 
I have the honor to present for the Certificate in Business Studies the candidates I'm about to name. Cyprian Mudzingwa. <laughs> Jessica Marie Rich. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Diploma in Business Studies the candidates I'm about to name. Monique Patrice McKierney. <laughs> Paula Marie Watkins. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Accountancy the graduates I'm about to name. Jing B. Andrew Lee Bott. <laughs> Julia K. Burgess. <laughs> Rachel Diane Butter, Massey Scholar. <laughs> Kudzai Christine Chawata. Timothy Raymond Dodge. Christy Eve Donaldson. Kirianne Francis Engels. Jessica Lucy Frewin. Kartik Gambier. Manuna Afuato He Moewa Momo. Anika Meredith McBreedy. Zane Kyle McKinnon. Simon Brian Minifee Pierce. Stuart John Rayner Nielsen. Corinne May Sherman. Yi Su. Jason Allen Williams. Taylor Rose Williams. Chancellor. I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Applied Economics, the graduate I'm about to name, Gabrielle N. Suarez Padilla. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Aviation, the graduates I'm about to name, Caitlin Cynthia Brightwell. Bien Patrick Cleo Abenez Exconde. Sean Andrew Kemp. Ravindra Adhish Kumar.
Yi Wen Li. Bavik Harish Mystery. Elisipi Katrina Rakona. Matthew Jeremy Tetley. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of aviation management, the graduands I'm about to name. Holly Grace Bartlett. <laughs> Henry Michael Idians. Prabhjot Kaur. Samuel Lewis Rollins. Patricia Steffi. Sinamaru May Eudora Whippy. Lauren Isabel Withers. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Business, the graduands I'm about to name. Connor James Bolesky. <laughs> Jamie Heather Bose. Renee Keitha Brown. Julianne Amber Buckley. Rose Bella Estraban Caparan. Harrison Hemi Evans. Andrew Peter Gibbs. Georgia Mary Gibbs. Liam Jack Giltrip. Blair Pongo Hodgkins. Joseph Zumi. Fazilat Nisha Khan. Wanjan Li. Isabella Victoria Luson. David Martin. Luke William McConaughey. Leah Marie McGrath. Rachel Catherine Murphy. Kylie Eleanor Oliver. Sarah Marie Pierce. Monica May Sinclair.
Grace Conejos Smith. Kenzie May Smith. Alexander James Snaden. Hamish Paul Taylor. Tupo Bolivar Viejo. Ralph Johannes Vermelen. <laughs> Justavak Singh Verk. <laughs> Jack Hamilton Whiteman. <laughs> Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you, everybody. It's now my pleasure to invite Conrad Wilkshire to address the graduates. Conrad, Conrad has a proven track record in both agribusiness and the financial services sectors. He started out as a farm cadet on Smedley Station in Central Hawke's Bay and earned the scholarship to attend Massey University in 1985, where he completed a Bachelor of Agriculture and a Diploma in Business Studies. He then joined the Royal Bank locally in 1989, where he spent the next 17 years in the finance sector. His last roles included Head of BNZ Private Banking and General Manager for BNZ's agribusiness based in Auckland. From there, he and his young family moved to Hamner Springs, where they bought a farm. He also took up a leadership role there with P.G. Wrightson. The last decade has seen him return again to the Manawatu, initially to take up the COO role for FMG where he led the response to three major earthquakes and the development of FPMG's agribusiness strategy. More recently, he's joined the leadership team of property brokers as it sets about developing a national real estate strategy. Conrad's career is best summed up as a total dedication to agriculture through a career in agri-finance, agri-insurance, and now agri-real estate. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm, messy welcome to a son of Messi. Welcome to Conrad. Kira Chancellor, Kira um, Vice Chancellor, and um, Kira, the uh, Professor Vice Chancellor uh, Stephen Kelly of the Messy Business School. Um, but mostly a big welcome uh, to the graduates and the audience here today. It is um, quite something to be uh, honoured in speaking to you all today. Uh, twofold, really. Uh, the ceremony itself, it's uh, 30 plus years since I was in the same Regent Theatre uh, receiving my uh, degree and then in diploma. And, um, you know, it, it goes very fast. And then equally, though, the honour really um, is to, on behalf of my family, um, show a debt of gratitude to Mercy University. We are extremely fortunate to have had the education we've had. And um, my brother has an MBA with distinction out of the Massey Business School. He's extremely proud of that. And that set his career on a path um, that has gone uh, literally you know, around the world. And he's had a, some fantastic opportunities. My brother has a, another brother has a Bachelor of Science in Dawson Computer Science that he's been involved with a whole bunch of wonderful activities, including um, working on some of the biggest stock exchange IT projects and leading all sorts of global projects for Credit Suisse and a whole bunch of other things. And it started here. And even my dear mother, who's 85 uh, next month, um, did three years with a, a BA in English. Didn't quite get to the graduation ceremony because for want of a last thesis, but she had three years on campus in her late 50s and it meant the world to her. So, um, Chancellor, it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity to be able to speak to this audience today and acknowledge just what um, this graduation can mean. I, um, I promise to keep a short speech. There's been tales of long ones. I, I will tr trust this won't be one of them. But I, um, as I speak to you all today, I'm not standing here as a 
New Zealand billionaire having just made his second billion. Um, for that, you probably need to talk to a good mate of mine from my old Napier Boys high school days, though I don't see much of him these days, Rod Drury. He, he clearly took more notes at school than I did, and I probably should have studied harder. Um, his story is very cool, though, for those that don't know it. He, he, listed on, he listed Zero, an international company today, on the NZX in 2007. Note the date, it's not that long ago, with only 100 customers with a goal to get to a million. Having a ch at the time, they raised 15 million. His own personal fortune, which I don't think he'd thank me for saying, is on the latest of what I read, is tracking towards two billion these days. But he, 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 st um, he still drops in and some good mates of mine on Zoom meetings and shares his perspective on how to make the most of you know, this post-COVID environment. So he's as grounded as an individual, um, still values his local um, whanau and where he grew up in Hawke's Bay to this day. So my story by comparison is a bit more meat and potatoes. My parents immigrated to New Zealand in 72 from the UK. They arrived in the Bay of Plenty in Waihi Beach with three very young children and $100 in their pocket. That's what it was. And um, it's probably that courage and their conviction to seek New Zealand as an opportunity for their children that was instilled in all three of us siblings and it probably has guided a lot of our drivers ever since. New Zealand University education is, is our opportunity. My mother was a teacher all her working life and education was always a given. Though her very socialist background, I think, uh, was extremely challenged as her uh, young children gravitated to business, business careers. Um, didn't always quite fit with her values. And um, you know, we've all made our start in life and education was its foundation. And we've taken full advantage of the opportunities that has afforded us as time marches on. When thinking about education, um, you often hear, will hear various comments as you go forward. I was very fortunate, agriculture was my passion, my study related to it, my commercial valuing, rural valuing backgrounds were always applied. And you often hear in life uh, remarks that I think often miss the point. They say, well, I've never really got to use my technical training of my degree. Um, but actually, when the most relevant training is the critical thinking and the skill to look past the first answer. And I certainly notice you can tell people that have had the benefit and applied themselves, they focus not on attacking symptoms but root causes of problems, and that's a real skill. And I think the opportunity to actually keep an open mind, that's can, if I look at the sciences, the sciences can teach the business community a lot in this regard, the discipline of critical thinking. The gift of learning and discovery never ends. This graduation offers you today not, not only the validation from a highly respected international university over three campuses, but you also have the ability to challenge and learn from everything you do. If you consider your degree, think about the difference uh, you can make from here, what it means to you personally. The qualification gets you to the game. It doesn't actually win the game. The difference you want to make in the world, and we can all make our own difference, and we can all be very proud of our own journey. Our journey is not a comparison against others. It's against what you set out yourself for. And that's what sets you apart from the rest, is your own personal drive. This is not just the domain of books and international biographies. It can be your own story. I had on and off approximately 20 years of experience with graduate employment, initially in the banking sector, as we geared up to meet the challenges of a growing, exponentially growing rural sector, which still has accounts for over 60% of New Zealand's exports, and in the post-COVID environment, probably closer to 80, as the education sector and tourism sector challenged with the current demands. Very proud of that time, but more latterly in the last decade, I work with FMG, and then we set out again with a graduate program as we look to challenge our culture and meet the future needs of farmers with risk management. And obviously the experience of the earthquakes wrote a big line under that. So it's not your degree that's your defining moment, it's what you hope to contribute as a result of it. And secondly, for those looking to go forward, it's not the role you're taking in the company that's important, but the company you are working for and the values it holds. Often too much is made of the role and not the opportunity. In my opinion, the first five years of your career directory 
the ideas you get exposed to and the culture and the people you get exposed to set your directory for the future. And for that, those budding entrepreneurs out there that have no truck with employment and want to go and do it their way, uh, I'm, I can pass on that many very good friends of mine have had enormous success with that. In fact, I regard them as unemployable. Um, I wouldn't have them work for me for anything. But they have achieved uh, boundless energy and created wonderful opportunities and created uh, some fantastic companies. And, but when I chat to them, and it's the same story, whether you're in your uh, formal career or an entrepreneur, it's always those first five years. So this next chapter of yours, as you go forward, is extremely important. Common to all of this, and when I reflect, is purpose. And you hear a lot in the current parlance around paying, uh, paying it forward in life. And uh, there's a lot of books written in recent times on that topic, and there's a lot of books written around purpose, and you can look up TED Talks and all kinds of various things to gain insight and confidence. But you actually can go back 150 years to the 19th century, and one of the best essays ever written was by an uh, American essayist, Ralph Waldo Emerson. And it is, for those who are ever interested, it's a great lesson to look up and read the full, and I won't, in the interest of time, cover it all here. But he speaks to the polarity of life in every part of nature, from night and day, to heat and cold, to the ebb and flow of the tide, even the male and female, to the compass where south attracts and north repels. There is an inevitable dualism by sex nature, so much so that everything is only half without the other. Emerson's contention is that the same dualism of nature underlies the condition of humankind in all our dealings. For everything you have missed, you have gained something else. Our strength and power grows by overcoming our challenges. Your point of view prevails when you fully understand the other. Every powerful and enduring message for me in this essay, the most powerful and enduring message for me in this essay, is something that I have used every day of my life, and that is honest service never comes to loss. Honest service never comes to loss. This is a very powerful insight as you said about life's journey. The contention being, every action shall be repaid. The longer the repayment is withheld, the better for you. For compound interest on compound interest is the rate of exchange. So interesting, the notion of paying life forward was firmly understood 150 years ago, not to bargain with life, but to pay its price on the day, as it will come back to you tenfold in years to come, and I can certainly attest to that. So avoid bargaining with life. Do the yards. Avoid always having to have payment up front. If you truly believe you'll be paid down the track, it is amazing what will come back. Pay the price so you can get life's credit working for you. A couple of thoughts to close on in terms of my own personal leadership philosophy. For yourself, establish your purpose, why you do what you are doing, and commit everything you have to it. Put the whole team in charge of the goal when you, come and when you get the privilege of leading. Avoid being the boss and sitting over decisions. Always give away more control than you feel comfortable with. Always, always recognise success along the way. Most everything worthwhile is achieved by going the extra mile. It's that extra 5% of effort at the last, at the last, that drain the tank that gets you home. Highlights for me, if I look at my BNZ Agribusiness, FMG and more latterly property brokers, in all these businesses, I've been part of a leadership team. It is folly to think as an individual, you make the only difference. But in all those teams, we had a guiding purpose. And in all those businesses I speak to there, they've doubled their market share and the, and the, of the opportunity and the privilege I've had to working alongside them. And if you think of our primary sector, what I'm passionate about is the role it plays for New Zealand. And, as, and I think the urban and rural divide, the business community and the agribusiness community need to meld together and Massey has done a wonderful job of doing just that. And it's a tremendous testament to its history and its contribution. And it's delivered, a, we have this wonderful competitive advantage in our country with all these natural advantages. So look, just some vocational ideas for you all to, as you graduate today and your conversations. For those seeking an employment career, choose the company, not the role. Once you're in the company, anything is possible. This company too can be your own company. Never look at the hourly rate. Look at the purpose and why you do what you do. Profits will always follow. Build a team around you, mates, mentors, and leaders, and down the track, 
your partner or wife, husband, whatever it might be. And just um, in the spirit of something to leave you with, I thought I'd leave with a poem. I'm not much of a poet, so bear with it. I bargained with life for a penny, and life would pay me no more. Have I begged at evening when I counted my scantly store? For life is a just employer. He gives you what you ask. Once you've set the wages, why, you must then bear the task. I worked for a life's menial hire, only to learn dismayed that at any wage I had asked of life, life would have willingly paid. Find your purpose. Well done to you all. It's an amazing opportunity you've got. And thank you very much for the opportunity to address you all. Cheers. Thank you so much, Conrad. Honest service never leads to loss. Well done, Conrad, and I can personally attest to your commitment to that kaupapa. Thank you again, Conrad. Kia ora mai tato. Thank you, everyone. We will now continue with the conferment of degrees and the award of university diplomas. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Graduate Diploma in Aviation the candidates I'm about to name. Fletcher Freedom Fulara. <laughs> Dennis Leslie Moratti. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Graduate Diploma in Business Studies the candidates I'm about to name. Amy Marie Haddon. <laughs> Celia Elizabeth Opie. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in business studies, or in business, the candidates I'm about to name. Saeli Arun B. Wa Purkar. <laughs> Pailin Cheng. Sarah Elizabeth Clark with distinction. Jeremy Patrick Dombrowski. Jasmine Falanza Galaza. Aishwarya Ganesh Gantasheita. Divya Prakash. Deepak Kanya Sharma. Prabhjat Singh. Chancellor. I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Executive Master of Business Administration, the graduands I'm about to name. Corey Ian Adams, first class honors. <laughs> Minas Abbas Mustafa Al Ansari. Heather Helen Andrews. Janine Margaret Blackmore.
Andrew Lampton Byrne. First class honors. Eric John Chapman, first class honors. Lindsay Johnson Cleo. Rochelle Lee Collier. Christopher Mark Coombs. Morel Awat Danila. Neil Derek Fitzpatrick, first class honors. Joanna Rose Gatlin. Amanda Christine Heron, first class honors. Nicholas Raymond Just, first class honors. Samuel Peter Keats, first class honors. Amanda Jessica Kennard, first class honors. Ilya Kartinova, first class, oh, sorry. Nathan Joel King. Kevin Arthur Andrew Kirkness. Garth John Hamilton Landers, first class honors. Pin Lei Lu. Hayden Philip Cameron Martin. Simbarsh Christopher Mashangedes. Kieran Wayne McKendry. Baron Frederick Nell, first class honors. Raywin Adele Pearson, first class honors. Soraya Wayata Pecky Mason. Laura Irene Quinn. Amanda Jane Saville, first class honors. Samuel Jerry Silveraj. <laughs> Davina Nicole Sisson. <laughs> Daniel Ross Shapansky. <laughs> Caroline Elizabeth Tate. First class honors. Daniel James Tate, first class honors. Russell William Troop, first class honors.
Craig Daniel Van Stratum. Michael Justin Williams, First Class Honors. Allison Catherine Wright. Alvin Bin Wu. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Analytics, the graduate I'm about to name, Yu Ma Fairbrother, with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Aviation, the graduates I'm about to name, Joel Anil Matthews. Jacob George. Karen Krishana Mysuria. Sean C. Sho Shen. Chancellor. I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Business Studies, the graduates I'm about to name. Stacy Marie Bell. Monica Rakeshni Sharma. Chancellor. I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Finance, the graduates I'm about to name. Khan Viet Hong. Adam Desmond Lori, with distinction and Massey Scholar. Tui Tu Nguyen. Hai Hong Chen. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Journalism, the graduate I'm about to name, Hope Renee Burmeister. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Management, the graduate I'm about to name, Mark Ocampo Ramos, with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Professional Accountancy and Finance, the graduates I'm about to name, Rosanna Gabrieli Kutomason. T. Q. Trong Nguyen, First Class Honors. <laughs> Chancellor, the degrees are also conferred and the diplomas are also awarded to those who are in absentia. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you, graduates. Thank you, everyone. It is now my pleasure to invite Samuel Keats to make the valedictory address on behalf of students. In 2018, Sam started his journey with Massey as part of the NZ10 cohort of the Executive Masters of Business Administration program. He commenced his study without any prior university study or undergraduate degree, and while he will admit he was grateful for the opportunity, it did result in a fairly rapid and steep learning curve. Sam is a police officer of almost 10 years and is currently acting in the rank of inspector. 
His service spans stints on the front line in Canterbury and Wellington districts, training delivery, and most recently in organisational development based at Police National Headquarters. Sam was motivated to join the Massey MBA to diversify what he knew of the world and what he could offer in return, taking a keen interest in organisational development, strategy, leadership, community learning and reflective practice. His research assignment brought together his topics of interest, testing out a new approach to the development of police officers in the field, utilising self-reflection within communities of practice. Elements of this work have formed the foundation for the reflective practice framework adopted as part of new leadership development programs. Most importantly and rewarding to Sam are his roles as a husband, father, brother and son. Ladies and gentlemen and graduates, please welcome Sam. Tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, thank you, Chancellor, distinguished guests, uh, Massey teaching staff and, um, and supporting staff. Thank you. Uh, welcome to my fellow graduates and, uh, importantly, welcome to your whānau and friends that you've brought along, uh, maybe unwillingly, on the ride with you for the last little while. We really appreciate you being here to help us cap off the end of our journey. It is my honour and privilege to deliver the valedictory address for you today. And in preparing for today, I thought long and hard um, about what I could say that would represent all of us. But like any good student, I got quite distracted at several points, which of course was the greatest, uh, greatest challenge of us students, distraction. And to be fair, in the last couple of years I've been studying, there's been some pretty worthy time thieves uh, that's taken us away from our study. For some of us, it was our families having our first children, or our second or our third. For others, it was the pub, and some others sports. But let's not forget that there was some other very entertaining distractions, including Jon Snow conquering Westeros, <laughs> the Avengers saving the world multiple times, the end of the Star Wars saga, and, uh, and Donald Trump doing Donald Trump things time and time again, including trying to buy countries like Greenland. And while reflecting on our many distractions over the last few years, it's hard not to be reminded by the tragedy and uncertainty that we've all witnessed, not just in the last year, but throughout our studies. The Christchurch terror attacks, the White Island eruption, the spread of COVID-19 across the globe, and the valid spotlight that's been cast across the world on justice and social systems following the deaths of several black Americans uh, after interacting with US law enforcement. All of these things have weighed heavily on us and our minds, and like most, if not all of you here, I say thank you to my peers that I've sat with today, and I say thank you to my family that sits in the aisle across from me. In these trying times, you've been our greatest inspiration, our best resource, and all the support that we could hope for, and is all that we needed to help realize this dream. Secondly, I thank the Massey University staff. Your agility, your compassion, your flexibility has ensured we got the robust education that we deserve, so thank you. So as I start to wrap up and are part of this journey, I wanted to share with you one lesson that I've learned from my peers, from my inspirations and from the journey as a whole. And it is not what the world thinks of you, but it is who you are and what you do next that will define you. In the lead up to today, I am denied about wearing my police uniform. And not because of a lack of pride. Every day that I put this on, I feel the weight of its legacy, the weight of the responsibility and the accountability that goes with wearing this uniform and our aspiration to keep every New Zealander safe. My fear, I think, shared by all of you at different times in your lives, is that I didn't want to be defined as just one thing. I didn't want to be defined by, as just the police officer. After all, like much of you, I started this journey into higher education to better myself, to live more richly, and to understand the world at a greater depth and detail. By standing here today in this uniform, I hope to remind us all that it does not matter what people think of you, what you look like, even what you wear. It is who you are and what you do that defines you. So I challenge you. Etu kutike o te waka ki a pākui kwe o nanaru o te wā. Stand at the stern of the waka and feel the spray of the future biting at your face. Now it is our time. Use the knowledge, skills, and drive that we are recognizing here today 
to be bold, to be brave. Don't apologise for who you are and to go out and do really great things. Because as we remind ourselves, what the world needs more of right now is really great people doing awesome things. So to close, because I know that I've taken up your time and everybody wants to get out of here, I thought I'd end with the first quote that I heard on the MBA. And um, it's a Peter Drucker one, probably the favourite of the business school right here. And it's uh, possibly tattooed on a discreet part of all of your bodies, or has been at one point in your lives. Mr. Drucker said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Well, Mr. Drucker, I see you, and your effort's okay, but I raise you. What it should be is culture eats strategy for breakfast, but great people do great things for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Good people, no, great people, Stay great, do great things, thank you. Oh, tēnē te mihi kia koe, Samuel. What a wonderful speech, beautiful messages. Thank you so much for sharing those. Can we give him a, another round of applause, please? Thank you. And now, uh, now it's um, uh, for us to uh, thank you, Samuel, and we will now move to with the cont we'll continue with the conferment of doctoral graduates. Chancellor, a doctorate, either a PhD or a professional named doctorate, is the highest research degree awarded by the university. The successful completion of a doctorate represents a significant achievement through the submission of a sustained piece of research expressed in the production of a written thesis of no more than 100,000 words or a creative work of equivalent size and scope or via a series of publications, candidates are expected to make an original contribution to knowledge in a specific field of study. Candidates will typically spend three to four years of full-time research solving a problem or addressing a particular set of questions. An international panel of experts then examines the resulting body of work through both written and oral examination. Doctoral research is challenging and represents a huge commitment to advancing research and scholarship. We honour the achievements of our doctoral graduates uh, by inviting them onto the stage, thereby formally welcoming them into the academic and scholarly community and acknowledging their entitlement to be called doctor. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, the graduand I am about to name. Bruce Robert Borquist. Chancellor, religious organisations have contributed to positive social change for centuries. Mr. Borquist investigated how a religious worldview intersects with values, gender, and institutional logics in faith based social entrepreneurship. He found that contexts of gender and a religious worldview reveal that pro social values, altruistic love, and selfless giving are central to social entrepreneurship. Chancellor, Dr. Borquist. Thank you, Chancellor. Would all our graduates please stand?
He honore nui te whakatau atu i a koutou, hei raukua o te kuninga ki pūre huroa. It is my great honour to welcome you as alumni of Massey University. The award of a university degree carries many privileges, but like all privileges, it also carries responsibilities. I charge you as graduates of Massey University to use what you have learnt for your own betterment and for the benefit of your communities. I charge you to use the skills and knowledge you have acquired with rigour and integrity and to commit yourselves to a program of lifelong learning and discovery. I charge you to remember the lessons Massey University has taught you about the worth of others, particularly those who've not had the opportunities that you have had. I charge you to set goals and to continue the hard work that has brought you so far and in all that you do. I charge you to be deserving of the good name of Massey University. Congratulations. Please be seated. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor. Kia ora mai tato. thank you everybody. At the conclusion of this ceremony, guests uh, kind of ask that you remain in your seats until the processions have uh, assembled in Broadway Avenue. Please then join us on our procession to the square where we hope you will mix and mingle with your graduates, staff, whānau, friends, who have all been part of your graduate successful journey. With that, I declare this congregation to be adjourned. Please join with us in singing the national anthem, God Defend New Zealand. It too now.